Okay, hello, this is Christian Bible Chapel, and we're here to start our evening service here, and we thank the Lord. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Our evening service today, this Sunday and next Sunday, is we're going to be speaking to our children. All right, Ephesians chapter 6. Next Sunday, we're going to show a um, story, have a t story time next Sunday at six o'clock. Today, we're going to talk about our uh, children, okay? Ephesians chapter six. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Now, bless us, O oh God, and speak to our hearts of our children, those from that age, O oh God, up until 18. We pray, Father, that you will bless their hearts, encourage them, and give them strength. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, that you may dwell, live long on the earth. Ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. So, children. Right? And of course, when we speak of children, we're speaking of little children, as far as children, not so much as little, but children from tiny tots all the way up to uh, 18 years old. Once they get 18, amen, we have to change our methods of training them or helping them and supporting them. All right. So children, obey your parents in the Lord. Children are to obey. The word obey means to follow their directions. Do as they say, as long as it's pleasing to the Lord and it is right. A parent should never tell a child to steal or do something wrong, to curse, to lie, to cheat, steal. But children from God says, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. It's the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. Honor means to respect them and deal diligence with them in the area of respect and honor and, and support, all right? Support means to feel sympathy for them, to pray for them and to help and nourish them because we do have some parents uh, that children uh, do support and help, all right? Now, that brings to mind to children as far as who are children adults adult children okay they are to still obey and honor their parents now i know i said from toddler up to 18 but there comes a time in the adult child's life that they should not curse at their father or mother they should not lie to their mother and father they should not scheme and cheat you know their mother and father as they were brought up in in the home talking about the adult child now as they was brought up they should do the same thing respect and honor their parents among people in the church in the community even at home it is a disgrace for you as a 26 23 32 45 year old child adult to disrespect, disrespect your parents. Right? That's not honorable in the sight of God. And the scripture says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth. Now the word live does not mean a duration of life. I know we think about that, but it's not. So we turn in our Bibles to the book of Exodus, and we're going to see why that does not mean long life. Here it is. In Exodus, all right, Exodus uh, chapter 20, in Exodus chapter 20, we see it says here in verse 12, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that their, that their days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Now, the phrase at the end of the sentence, it says, it says this in verse 12, 
that the days may that thou days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. So interpreting that, that means that the blessings of God, see the land comes with blessings. And it's a it's a it's sort of like a blessing. Okay, that's what the word live in Ephesians 6 and compared here with Exodus 20 and 12. Live long that you may, that thy days may be long, live long, Ephesians 6, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. It is the blessings of God that children today, any child throughout the generations, are to honor their father and mother so that you may receive the blessings from God. That you may receive the blessings from God. That blessing may come from your, you having children who will also honor you and respect you. Then of course, if you don't honor and respect your parents, how do you think your children or your, and your grandchildren is gonna honor and respect you? See, this is a generation thing. This is a generational blessings right here that God is issuing here. So in Ephesians chapter 6, as we go back to it, it says, Ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the ammunition of the, of the Lord. Now, this is not saying only fathers can do that. If the father is in the home, they are instructed to do that. But if the father is not in the home, it is the male of the family or the female of the family. It rests then upon the female of the family to nurture and bring up the child in the Lord, in the things of the Lord. And we're gonna see in the scripture what that means. Let's look at Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, there's a couple of scriptures we're gonna look at before we close. In Proverbs chapter 20, it says this in verse 20. Whoso cursed his father or his mother, all right, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Okay, the, uh, the writer here is it's admonishing not only children but the adult children also. If you curse, disrespect, profoundly ignore and hate and antagonize and ill treat your father and your mother this is what it means by the curse okay and cursing too it says that your lamp shall be brought out put out what is the lamp that's going to be put out well your life was going to be a life of trials heart severe trials and tribulations hardness it could be sickness it could be devastating things that come to your life because you have what mistreated your father and your mother. So it says here in Proverbs 20, 20, whoso cursed his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. So remember that, children. Okay. Some of us as parents now, all right, we're facing that. All right. We're facing that because of what we treated our, our family, our parents, my parents, the adults then of course it's going to linger down to your grandchildren maybe to the third or fourth generation the scripture tells us this in the book of exodus in the ten commandments all right let's look at another scripture this is a familiar one in which a lot of people know it says train up a child in the way he should go when he is old he will not depart from it all what you diligently train your child in the things of the Lord. Now this here goes along with Ephesians chapter 6. Let me let me go back to that in Ephesians chapter 6. Okay? It says, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Parents today, not all, but some, and it's sad that parents will train their children to do everything else but the things of God, spiritual things. that Some parents won't even read their Bible, read the Bible to their children. There's no gospel songs in the home. There's no prayer in the home. 
There's no church going in the home. There many homes today, they going to church on Sunday is far from them. They don't even think it doesn't because they was brought up that way. And then it's not only that they would wasn't brought up that way. They far fetched. They were brought up, but then they strayed away from that, from for whatever reason. But it says, train up a child in the way he should go. So this scripture here is most likely, not most likely, I'm sorry, is alluring to the fact about child bearing. Now, when a, when, a, when a mom in the Old Testament days had a child, the midwife was there, all right? The midwife job was to make make sure that the, the the mom that's having the baby be comfortable okay and see to her needs when the child comes up comes out of the uh, vagina as far as the fallopian tube and it comes out so you didn't have doctors and all that what we got today all right and when the child comes out the midwife was to take the child and wipe the blood off the child and clean them up. And then the child, as they wipe them up and everything, the midwife was to dip their fingers into some crushed fruits, okay? What that does is get the child who never been taught how to suck to begin to have a sucking sensation with their lips. As the midwives begin to stir their fingers into the child's mouth and the child begins to suck on the midwives' fingers. See, this is old, old stuff in the Old Testament all the way up to the possibly 15th, 16th, 18th century. But in any case, the midwife was to take the child to the breast of the newly mom and lay the child on the sternum on the breast on the chest of the mother near the breast and take the breast and put it in the child's mouth quickly as they move the finger away and the child keeps sucking once the child begins the sucking sensation on the mom's breast the child becomes familiar with the milk that's coming from the mom's breast and this is old stuff, okay? This is old stuff. I, they don't do that now, just like the diaper thing. Remember the diaper, changing the diaper. They don't do diapers, right? Many, some don't even do the pamper thing. But in any case, this is what Solomon is alluring to also. Train up the child. In other words, teach your children about God, the things of God, the spiritual things about God. Read the Bible to them, pray with them, have conscious, have both verbal conversations with them all right remember what uh, moses said in deuteronomy uh, chapter six all right i'm reading in deuteronomy chapter six all right it says uh well i'm not going to be dealing with the ten commandments all right but i'm trying to get that passage of scripture there with me all right Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 6, when they, see, this is the Hebrews, and they was to pass their teachings, their faith, on to their children. It says, hear, O Israel, yeah. the Lord thy God is one, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, All right. hear, O Israel. Shema. This is the Shema that all children need to learn if you was a Hebrew in those days. It's the boy in, in particularly. Okay. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy being. These words which I command you this day be in thine heart. You shall teach them diligently unto your children. All what your father taught you, 
you teach your children. So it's the grandfather teach their the grandfather, right? Which we know as my mom, teach me, my father, and my father, mom, teach they taught me, and I in turn teach my children. And my children, when they get up age and get married and produce children, they teach their children. That's what this is. It. Thou shalt teach thy children diligently and shall talk of them when you sit in the house, when you walk by the way, when you and and and, and when you lie down, and when you get up. This is Deuteronomy 6 and 7, 6 and 7. This is the responsibility of the parent. The principle behind that is to bring them up, train them up in the things and the way of the Lord, his commandment. The best thing to do, I suggest, as a parent who really don't know, never been to Sunday school, or you're not accustomed to going to church, or you may not be custom to going to church, well, at this particular time, you're at home right now, instead of you're doing vigil uh, church as we do on Facebook and internet, uh, read your children storybooks, some story out the Bible. Take your time, a couple of minutes. It don't take a whole hour, doesn't take 45 minutes, just a couple of minutes. Right. Sing some songs with them, have prayer, that's it. And each Sunday or sparingly throughout the week, you do this. And not only you're teaching them the things of the Bible of God, you're teaching them wholesome, clean things. Remember how parents, especially mothers, would sit down and teach their children how to sew and how to, how to do things, how to cook. And you're taking time, how the fathers would take the child out in the yard and do these things, or the car, take them out to the car. If they don't have a car, uh, sit down and talk to them about their parents and how it used to be this way and that, and how we you know, in the old days. And the, those you're bringing up, you're teaching, you're putting values, important values in the heart and the mind of your child. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, he or she will not depart from it. It's, it'll stick with them. They leave their home, it will stick with them. They depart from the faith, it will stick with them. They go to another religion, it will stick with them. They move to another state, it will stick with them. When he is old, old means on their own, by themselves, in the apartment, at college, get married, old as also as old age, as they progress in life, take on their own responsibility and career, old, they will not depart from it. Another, down verse 15, Proverbs twenty-two fifteen. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. We all did some crazy things, some foolish things. I remember my mother a couple of times caught us hopping the bus. Sherman, get off of that bus on Fulton Avenue. And then number one will go up and we would try to catch the bus up to Mondamin or up to the the soda place or the place to get the hot dogs and whatever up on Pennsylvania and uh, Fulton. That's when it turns and that's where the veteran warehouse was up there. We would hop the number one and take it up there. And a couple of times my mother caught us, get out from there. Foolishness is bound in us as children. And that's part of our makeup. It's part of your child's makeup. So if you're struggling with your child and they're being rebellious, you say rebellious, or you say they're not doing what you say, that's part of the foolishness that's in them. That's part of their makeup as a child, especially the preteens, oh boy, preteens, which is nine to 12 or 13, really, nine to 13. Then it's the teenage years, 12, 13 to 16. Then it's the pre-adolescence, uh, pre and is that, oh boy, but wait till they get uh, 16, 15, 16, 17, and they become giants and over your head, and they're that way. They really think they can, you know, kick your butt or whatever, beat you up or whatever. Uh, but that's all the foolishness that's in the child. The parent should be careful 
all children, we should not have a respect of person towards our children. If you got five children, eight children, three children, two children. But at the same time, you cannot treat your nine-year-old child like your 16-year-old child. In other words, if the nine-year-old child has to be on the steps at night in the summertime, no, no school, then why are you making your 16-year-old do that? When they should have more leeway, at least go to the end of the block, okay? And then your 18-year-old, okay, they can go even further, all right? But some parents, not knowingly, they discipline, they treat their all their children the same way. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it from it, from them. Now, the rod of correction. Now, back in our days when we were riding, growing up, without knowledge, I know now, but back then, when we was growing up, the rod was always the belt, always the belt. All right. Sometimes it would be stay in the house, but my I don't think my parents knew that that was part of the rod. You know, the old slogan, spare the rod, spoil the child, that's not Bible, but that's what we was taught. That's what was brought up in our generation, upbringing. Right. Of course, we as parents now today know better, but we know back then. Man. The rod of correction can be the telephone. Yeah. Uh, my son, <laughs> he, he, let's see, let me say, um, he would love to have, he would love to be punished and stay in the house. I think that's the way it was because he would stay on the phone all the time. He didn't mind getting punished, but you take my other girls, they didn't want to get punished and stay in the house. They want to go out. So, <laughs> so you have to dangle whether to keep the phone from them, not to allow them to have the video, you know, the TV or to um, uh, f figure out how to discipline them. The rod of correction is different methods that the parent use to correct their children. All right? Some are effective and some is not effective. I mean, it got to the point that when my father was beating me, I didn't even cry. That made him even worse better. That made him mad and he beat even harder. I just stood there. I was so mad. You know, I, he ain't gonna cry, huh? Bam, 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 you know. Then finally, I just used some common sense and shed some tears and that stopped the beating. <laughs> but that was the rod of correction during my father's day, all right? But the rod of correction can be any means by disciplining the child. And it doesn't have to be physical because today it's child abuse, okay? They tell you, they, those, those guys that make the laws up in Congress and the Senate and and in Annapolis and down City Hall, they was brought up that way, but they're now they're saying don't do that. But there's there's a limitation in it. I understand that. There's a limitation and all the time it doesn't have to be the 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 belt. And a lot of parents, you know, they do that. I mean you can't when you see it's just like you try you you you're growing a tree. You put it in a big pot. And you refuse to take care of it, but you're letting it grow and it leaning. Then when you see it lean, that's when you're going to try and put a stick in the soil and push it back. Then you break it. That's the same thing a lot of parents are doing. They don't early child raising and early disciplining their children while they're young because now they're sassy. Now they're taking over the house. Now they're telling you what to do. And they're running the school. You know, see, had this been dealt with early in the lives of the family in the home, see, we, 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 we send them to Sunday school or we expect the school to do it. No, it is your job. It is not your grandparents' job. And that's been done a lot today. The grandparents are raising the children. There's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of parents who are young want to have the children and then go out and party or go out and be young again, or whatever the case may be. And you got to stay home and raise those kids and deal diligently with them to the point that you've disciplined them and bringing them up, being careful how you do it. 
because then it's going to turn around that as you see, remember that scripture where it says in Proverbs 20, 20, all right, your lamp shall go out obscure darkness. Th that brings into play wherein, wherein God allows your past traits, your past undisciplined behavior towards your parents begin to be shattered on your children. Then you look at it and say, boy, girl, I don't know where you get it from. Then you think, oh, yeah, I used to act like that. Why? Because, see, you had no discipline. Now you're doing the same thing and you're not bringing your children up. Can you imagine now when your children grow up and they don't discipline and correct their children? God is trying to spare us generational, you know, havoc. If we only obey his word, we live in a society now that we're not saying every time, you, you know, your children do something wrong, beat them. Some methods of sitting down and talking work. Some methods of not giving them allowances, it works. See, you have to choose. You have to know your children. They're your children. If you spend more time with them, you will know their ups and downs, their feelings, their likes and dislikes. Some children today cannot talk to their parents. Maybe the parents is busy working all the time. Workaholics. Some parents don't understand. They don't care to understand. They don't want to understand. And the child knows this. Some ch children are fearful of their parents, scared that they will get hit. And you know, you got parents that that beat their children with their fists, hit them, smack them it's on, against their head, throw them around, kick them, and all. This is not. This is uncalled for. That's not going to discipline them. That's not discipline. That's not chastening. That is not what the Lord is saying. That is not the rod of correction. You only pushing them away, probably into the hands of an older man, probably in the hands of prostitution, probably in the hands of drugs, or probably in the streets or runaway. And you don't want to do that. Now, the thing is, what you want to do is, Pray and ask God, give me wisdom. Help me to use the right corrections to teach and bring my children up. Because our failures as parents to bring up our children and teach them not only Christian values, biblical values, but social values, all right, educational values, things that will help them in the future, you're going to regret later on because it's going to be an embarrassment to you. You know, remember in the day, they say, where your father at? Where your father at? You act just like your father. Where your father? That's why you ain't going to be anything now. You act just like your father. See, some mothers are telling their sons that, which is a horrible disgrace. And the son is taking that in. And then, of course, history repeat themselves, that the child, the son, doesn't become anything. No encouragement from the parents. No encouragement. And then it spreads into the school system and the school teacher finds out about it. And, the, you know, the school teacher do the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, until they meet up with a nice, kind counselor or a good uncle or a good neighbor or a, 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 a male or female who take an interest in them and begin to teach them those things. But that's not their job. It is the parent's job. Then at the same time, the scripture tells us in Proverbs 23, verse 13, withhold not correction from the child. It's the same thing in Proverbs 22, 15, the rod of correction. That rod does not mean take the belt to him. And that's that's the only thing of, you know, you know, cursing, beating them with the belt. It's not the rod of correction. That is not what the scriptures is upholding. But because of our humanness and our sinful fallen condition and how we was brought up, we do those things. And it just push some children, some children away. Some can bear it and some cannot. It says withhold not correction from your child. For if you beat him with the rod, if you beat it, him with the rod. See, again, the phrase beat him with the rod. We literally take that 
to mean stension cord, a bat, a stick, a whip, switches. And that's what was accomplished in the old days of our days and back further. But this is not what it's talking about. All right? This is not what it's talking about. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but you got to use wisdom. You got to temper your anger. You got to temper your wisdom. You got to temper yourself and calm down as a parent. All right? And you got to know your child. You know, because the thing is that some children are so fearful of their parent, even when their child want to hug them or hold, get ready to hit them, they, they, they dutch back because they're so used to their child, their parent smacking them and hitting them or pushing them away from them. Fear developed. So when the scripture says withhold not correction from your child, you have to use wisdom of what sort of correction. Okay, what sort of correction to do them? To, to, to discipline, to, to measure to them. Some parents do use belts or whipping, all right? But let me tell you one thing. You better be careful when you do that, you know? And the thing is that many times those that do do that is because we was brought up that way. And you say, well, well, it worked for me and it'll work for them. I don't care. Bam, bam, bam. Didn't I tell you down, bam, bam. But you see, the thing is that you're trying to teach them values. You're trying to teach them that they shouldn't go out with as a 12-year-old with that 18-year-old boy. Bringing them a 12-year-old in the house, dragging them upstairs and beating them with the belt it's not going to convince them not stop seeing that LD, that older guy. So you got to use wisdom. And and I know a lot of parents are going to say, well, you train your home, you do what you got to do. But you see, as Christians, this is why I say it's Christian counseling, is that you got to do things that's with wisdom. And that's why we're dealing with the book of Proverbs. It's a book of wisdom. It says, Withhold not correction from your child, for if you beat him with the rod, he shall not die. If you hold back, you know, your, your, see, this is what, you got to temper your anger. You got to calm down, you know, the same count to 10 and whatever, okay? Because if you lash on them, after you find out they're seeing that boy, or they did, got a D, excuse me, in, in school, or they played hooky from school, or they did something and, and, and put a tack in the teacher's chair, or uh, they pulled the girl's hair, or they beat, was fighting in school, or they, you know, did something to the neighbor's lawn, or something in the house, they're beating up their brother or sister, or teasing and taunting them. Well, as a parent, you have to be diligent with wisdom and tamper that with that, and understand that you got to beat them with the rod, but what rod are you using? The physical rod doesn't work all the time from some children because some children are high strung. They are, uh, they're stubborn. They, they, no matter how many times you beat them, it doesn't work. So you got to change your tactic. You got to change your method. You got to change your way. This is why I'm saying to you, Learn your child, know your child, all right? What's best for your child, okay? Thou shall beat him with the rod, he shall deliver himself from destruction. And that's, see, I changed the word, I, you see me saying not soul and hell, because you can't beat the soul. You're beating the body. You're disciplining the body. You're disciplining the mind, really. Because as the person thinks, so he does. Scripture bear witness with it. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as you sit them down and talk with them and use examples for them and either take them to the, the jail and see, look, is this where you want to be at? Is by doing this and that? You know, so you as a parent, you got to use wisdom. So that beating them with the rod is a method of discipline 
that you're giving to your child to teach them, to train them that that which they've done is wrong. So it'll better prepare them in the open world and that world in that career when they step out those doors and go look for a job or working at a job or bringing up a home or having children and having a family. Right? Crushing their spirit is not going to work. And I find out that many parents crush their spirit of their child at an early age. They're trying to bend them back. Wherein you saw them grow, go wild. You saw them spit at a person. You saw them being not sharing their toys, talking about toddlers and all the way up. You saw them, you need to approach them and use wisdom to try to convince them that that's not right. Whether it's story time or whether it's some method and talking with them, pulling them aside and say, boy, didn't I tell you that you need to share your toys? I'm gonna whip your butt. See, that's, that method doesn't work. And that's not the time in which you used to do that. There will be times in which that applies, but that time is not wisdom and bringing up your children. You will beat him with the rod and you shall deliver his mind, his body, his actions, his ways, his behavior, I'm substituting the word soul, from destruction. And some kids, no matter how much, and you as an example, I am an example, that you can discipline your children all you want and you can do the best that you can for them, but they still go contrary. And that happens. That will happen out of four people, kids in the home, one go straight or three go straight or none of them go straight, thank God. But you can do all you can and some will might wind up being a statistic. You pray and hope that they don't. This is the reason why with loving care, you're trying to bring them up and teach them the values of life to respect women. You know, if they all the time see you yelling and cursing at your mother, they feel as though that's the same way I can do it. And so that's why we see men at, in the Walmart, at Walmart in, in the parking lot, yelling and cursing at their, 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 the female knowing that she's a queen and you the king, but you're treating your queen like that. And if they see you doing these things as a father, they feel as though it's all right for them to do it. It's vice versa for the mom to the daughter. Train your daughter, moms. Fathers, train your kids, your, your sons, because if you don't, somebody else will. Don't get angry and upset when they start saying, that's my father, who is really their uncle. Don't get upset because the uncle took on that responsibility and you shy away out of the house or you just, you know, became a rolling stone or you became just out of the house, out of the picture all the time. Don't get upset, mom, when they start hooking up with another female and start spending more time with them. Don't get upset with them. See, you, you, that's your failure. That's your failure. How do you regain that? You, you got a, a, a hard work to get, and that means you got to throw all that love and, and compassion and time, and it's going to take time for you to draw them back to yourself. It can happen, but it takes time, it takes patience, and it takes love and endurance. So this ends this portion of the scriptures that I want to relate to you about children's church and children. Don't stop cursing at your mother and father. They're not perfect parents. Sometimes our parents make bad decisions. We do. We make wrong decisions. We're not perfect. And some of the things that we do, we do because we was brought up and we felt as though that it, it can serve you best. What I've been brought up with by my parents and so I'm passing it on to you. It's It may not serve you, but don't disrespect them and don't dishonor them. Obey them because God is watching you 
and he observing you. Yes, he is. He is observing you. And there's plenty of scriptures in the Old Testament that shows us that there's a generation sins that could possibly pass from you to your children. And if you're not careful, the darkness will be upon your children. The lamp will go out in your children. Think about that. Think about that. Nurture your children in the things of the Lord, in the ammunition of the Lord. Fathers, take time. Take time to deal with your children and work with them. Be patient as people is patient with you. Be patient with your children. Children, love and obey your parents. This is right in the sight of God. Fathers, provoke not your children to laugh, but bring them up in the nurture and ammunition of the Lord. Moms, spend some time with your daughters. Spend some time. I know the old way is gone and you want to live your life now, but look, you have to consider the spiritual welfare of your children. You have to consider the educational welfare, the social welfare, domestic welfare, all these things, because if you don't, the government, the state, and the system, and the streets, and society will get them. And you really don't want that to happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. Father, we pray for our children. They are our future, Lord. Help us to bring them up in the nurture of the Lord. Help us as parents, saved parents, unsaved parents. We are creators, creations of the almighty creator, our Lord and God. Help us to realize that we still have a responsibility simply because we're Christians, but non-Christians, all of God creation namely the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, both strive to teach their children, their pups, their foal, how to survive. Ought not we as humans teach our children how to survive? Righteously, rightly, holy, honorably thank you father give us as parents skills wisdom knowledge and understanding help us to have discernment towards our children that we may know them and understand them while we love them and be patient with them and understanding with them help our emotions keep it intact help our feelings keep it intact and bless us in jesus name we pray amen next week amen we're gonna um show a film well we're gonna have a clipping for our children to watch dealing with salvation may god bless you next sunday afternoon at six o'clock <laughs>